you will get a more detailed insight into the personal budget system in Flanders and you have the opportunity to ask questions. So ESPD has had a long-standing interest in user-centered funding models and I still remember fondly our first dedicated conference in 2007 in Sofia and some of our more recent initiatives have been a conference on funding models in Bucharest in 2019, a study that we commissioned in the same year and the unit project that we started in 2020. Use of centered funding models such as personal uh, budgets are certainly a very important tool for moving towards user centered support and for ensuring choice and control of service users. And this move is necessary for the implementation of the UN Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities for co production, participation, and inclusive communities. And this innovative way of funding has received increasing interest from public authorities across Europe in recent years. And personally, my first contact with the personal budget and personal assistance model in Flanders was in 2015 when VAPH won the Zero Project Award and we were able to invite a personal budget holder to a conference we organized in Salzburg together with the regional authorities. And I must say for us, it was a very inspiring experience and it definitely helped us to convince the regional decision makers to start a pilot project on personal budgets and personal assistance. And this has expanded ever since. So I'm really looking forward on this update on the efforts in Flanders. And I'm happy that our colleagues from VRPH will share their experiences, their challenges, and their successes towards user-centered funding. VRPH is also an important partner in the UNIT project. And that's how we would like to start our Knowledge Cafe today. And I would like to ask Constantina, Policy and Project Officer in ESPD to give us a short overview. Constantina, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Karin. And uh, I will now share my screen. Um, so uh, thank you uh, from my side as well for joining us this uh, no, in this knowledge cafe. Um, and uh, uh, today I will give you a short presentation about the unique project uh, that uh, we are currently coordinating at ESPD uh, with the support, of course, of many uh, uh, different partners from different countries, which I will also present uh, in the end of uh, the presentation. First of all, I thought that it will be important to, to start by, um, uh, by giving you more information about uh, what the, this project aims to do. And the main uh, purpose of this project is to help public authorities to introduce a user center funding model in the sector of long-term care and support. This project started in October of uh, the previous year and it will run until October of 2023. However, uh, users, uh, what are the user center funding models? Karen gave us uh, a, a, an overview of what exactly is that, uh, but it will be also interesting, I think, to mention uh, some of the findings uh, that we arrived upon uh, our research across Europe and uh, across the world as well. Uh, so we were not able to identify a unified international term rather than a variety of, of ways uh, to refer and describe a user-centered funding model. We usually uh, use the term personal budget, and this is uh, mostly used uh, across Europe and in different uh, research and other materials. Uh, however, uh, we, we saw uh, the terms individualized funding, uh, direct payments, care allowances. Also, uh, we were able to identify that user-centered funding models are very different uh, across the world, uh, not only in, ter in their term, but 
also uh, on uh, their purposes, on their structure. Uh, but what is important uh, to, to keep uh, from, uh, from that is that uh, um, in these funding models, people are in the center as they are actively participating in designing and organizing their support. So here in this, in a model as such, there is room for flexibility. Also, uh, these models are tailored uh, to the needs of each of the individuals, and they are also empowering. They are enabling individuals to make choices and to have control over their own lives and over the support that they are going to receive. Why do we believe that the user center funding model is important to be further explored and to be further developed in different countries? Uh, evidence uh, has shown that the sector of long-term care and support has difficulties to meet the needs of its each of the individuals that they receive support and also to, uh, to align with the wishes of the people. Also, uh, people uh, have uh, uh, problems with accessing uh, the long-term care and support services. The out-of-pocket cost uh, is high, so uh, many people do not afford uh, this type of services. Funding uh, is challenging and that uh, uh, has difficulties on the sustainability of these services. And also we have the challenges when it comes to the workforce, as the sector uh, uh, may not be as attractive as other uh, sectors. And of course, all of these together with other challenges have an impact on the quality of the services that are provided. However, uh, we have seen uh, that personal budgets improve the well-being of individuals. Uh, they help people to make decisions, to control their lives, and to participate actively in the development of their services. How are we going, are we moving forward with this project? First of all, we started by uh, doing a state of play in Europe and across the world, as I mentioned previously. We wanted to identify some promising practices and that also helped us in, also, in order to develop a roadmap with guidelines to help public authorities by providing them guidance on how they can introduce a model as such. Then we are developing a toolbox that this toolbox aims on uh, helping the public authorities and this toolbox is going to be piloted in planters for one year with the support of our uh, partner uh, via Beha, and then it will be transferred in Czech Republic, Finland, Austria and Spain. Very shortly, I would like also to introduce you to this toolbox. Uh, this toolbox will support public authorities to design, to develop and evaluate the personal budget system. It consists of three different tools. The first one is for persons that receive a budget and uh, that involves people in monitoring the quality of the personal budget system. Then uh, the next tool is a is uh, about services because it is important for services to adapt and to personalize their services to meet the individual needs and wishes of the individuals that they support and uh, here we are developing a tool to guide them on how they can uh, they can uh, do this transition and last but not least the, the last tool that we are developing aims directly to the public authorities uh, because this tool uh, will support them to design, develop and evaluate a personal budget system. And now who we are? We are representatives from uh, service providers. Uh, in the partnership, we have representatives from older people, for persons, from persons with disabilities. So as you can see, we have the Center for Welfare Reform from the UK, Lebenslife from Austria, and we have Karen with us today, um, and the European Aging Network, uh, and uh, the Association of Social Services from Czech Republic, via Beha that we present their services today, the Disability Federation of Ireland, support uh, from Girona, and the Service Foundation from people with an intellectual disability, disability from Finland. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Here is uh, the website where you can find more information and I will put my email on the chat box in case uh, you would like to reach out a little bit more about the project. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Constantina. You really made good use of the limited time. You made a very clear and compact summary. And I can ensure you that ESPD will keep on informing you on the progress we are making on the unique project in the two years to come. So now we are ready to go to the main topic of today's Knowledge Cache. And I am happy to welcome Tess and Sam from VAPH, which is the Flemish Agency for Promoting Participation, Integration and Equal Opportunities for Persons with Disabilities. And please share with us your experiences you had in moving towards personal budgets. The floor is yours. My dear colleagues. Thank you, Karen, for the nice introduction. Uh, I will try to share my screen. Uh, do you see the presentation? Yeah. OK. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let me start by expressing our gratitude uh, for the opportunity we get to come and explain the system of personal budgeting in Flanders. Flanders is a part of Belgium, and as you might know, Belgium is a federal country with some unique characteristics. Therefore, it's important to sketch the big picture in order to understand the system for supporting people with disabilities in Flanders. Like in all federal countries, of course, there is a federal government. In Belgium, the federal level has assigned and residual powers. The latter are the powers that are not assigned to any level. The assigned powers include the army, national security, and social security. With regard to people with disabilities, the federal level provides, uh, provides the income replacement allowance and the integration allowance, both of which are income dependent. Belgium is divided into three regions. Those regions hold land-based competences. Those are powers in connection to the territory, like spatial planning and mobility. The three regions are the Flemish region, which is Dutch speaking, the Walloon region, which is French and for a small part German speaking, and the region Brussels capital. The last region is completely surrounded by the Flemish region, but is bilingual French-Dutch. Belgium is also divided into three communities. The communities have powers in the area of cultural and personal matters like education and supporting people with disabilities. As you can see, the communities are the Flemish community on the top uh, of the line, the French community on the bottom of the line and uh, the German community. Both the Flemish and the French communities are competent in the Brussels capital region. So each on their own, they organize their education system and support for people with disabilities and other powers in connection to persons. We won't go into detail when it comes to Brussels because it's too complicated to explain in a couple of minutes. In the Belgium federal system, all assigned powers include implicit powers. This includes the ability to, to negotiate and to uh, adopt treaties with other countries and international organizations like the UN. It's also very important to mention that there is no hierarchy in norms when it comes to the norms of the different entities. So the federal government cannot overrule the policy of the communities or the regions. Now we will zoom in on how the support for people with disabilities is organized in the Flemish community. First, we have the Flemish Social Protection, which provides the basic support budget and also allowances for mobility aid. Next to that, there's the VAPH, the Flemish Agency for People with Disabilities, which Tess and I rep represent today. The VAPH provides allowances for assistance, assistive te technologies and adaptations, directly accessible support and care, 
and care and support for minors with disabilities and the topic of today's Knowledge Cafe, personal budgets for adults with disabilities. With their budgets, pe uh, people with disabilities can purchase non-directly accessible care and support. Until a couple of years ago, the non-directly accessible care and support was mainly organized in the classic traditional manner. Namely, it was a supply-driven finance system. The service providers received an amount of subsidies in exchange for which they provided care and support for a number of people. The exception to this was a personal assistance budget system, which the uh, person uh, with disability could become an employer and organize his care and support himself. Relative to users of service providers, this was only being used by a small group of people with disabilities. As we all know, in 2006, the UN Convention on the Rights for People with Disabilities was adopted by the General Assembly of the UN. This convention was ratified by Belgium and Flanders in 2009, and in 2010, the Perspective 2020 was adopted by the Flemish government. This concept note lays out the groundwork for a long-term view on how to organize care and support for people with disabilities in Flanders in accordance to the UNCRPD. It is a public document and this assures continuity, but it does not create any legal obligations in itself, not even to the government. Perspective 2020 included the switch from a supply-driven to a demand-driven system. So a change from subsidies for service providers to personalized funding provided directly to people with disabilities. Personal budgets are a means to an end. And the two main goals of Perspective 2020 are, firstly, a guarantee of care for people with disabilities with the greatest need for support in the form of care and support in kind or cash. And secondly, well-informed users that enjoy demand-driven care and assistance in an inclusive society. These goals include quality of life for people with disabilities, autonomy, self-direction, demand-driven care and support, participation of people with disabilities, empowerment and inclusion. Now that I set out the concourse of the Flemish uh, system, let us now listen to a testimony from someone who, has, who was supported in the old system and now has a personal budget to organize his care and support. Miguel, can you please start the clip? My name is Patrick and I ben 30 years old. I work on a wall hut, but I must have bread on my oog. And that is all I can be born. I've been blind to more than I lack only of a twerk and a link to oog. I have the name, I can say, Kronblit Rata Prater. En het leenlijken. Die wordt aangegroeid, maar het zag er niet door. Dan heb ik bij een ander oog hart geweest, informatie gebracht. En die zei: Moet even met die professor gaan, je laat me opreden. Voor zo'n kronkje. En dan om een dag twee per voetuig. Maar meneer, je mag binnenkomen. Bij John Uitbeurt. Ik ben naar hem. Het moet het met de trak op tafel. En op een moment werd ik wakker en zat de kinderen rond toe. En ik bleek constant een lipje aan. Hij was er. Pauzen dat ik op, 
ਉਹਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਹੱਥ ਪਰਨ ਜੋਂਦੇ ਕੀ ਚਬੋਦਾਈ ਜੀ ਦੰਬਨ ਨਰ ਰਿਵਰ ਦਾਚੀ ਚੰਤਰਮਾਨ ਰਿਵਰ ਦੇ ਬਿਨ ਅੱਧਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਮੁਨ ਨੇਤਰਿੰਗ ਬਰਾਉਂਦੀ ਕਮ ਕ੍ਰੀਤਰ ਹਿੰਦੀ ਬੋਲੀ ਦਾ ਚੁਪਿਤ ਨੇਂ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬੋਲ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਰਪ ਬਾਚੇ ਦੀ ਨਕਾਰਤਾ ਵੀ ਬੈ ਮਕਾਰਤਾ ਤਨਨ ਚੋਕਲੇਟਰੋਜਨਨ ਇਤਨਨ ਪ੍ਰਾਤਨ ਅਨਾਵਤਨ ਤਿਕੇ ਰੈਂ ਹਮ ਬੋਲਿੰਗਨ ਮਤ ਮਿਸ ਮਾ ਕਲਾ ਫੂਡ ਨੇ ਦਾ ਨੀ ਹੂ ਫੂਡ ਨੇ ਦਾ ਨੀ ਮਾ ਪ੍ਰਾਂਚ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਫਿਟ ਲੈਕਰੋਪ ਤਿਕੇ ਬੰਚ ਐਨ ਚੈਟਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਬਰੋ ਜੀ ਮਾ ਬਰੋਮਿਅਮ ਬਰੋ ਜਿਤ ਤਮ ਬਰੋ ਇਹ ਮੁਦਰ ਮੁਲ ਕੁਆ ਕੁਨਿਆ ਦਾ ਬੁੰਦਰ ਆਪਾਂ ਤੇ ਚੰਬਰ ਮੈਂ ਬਾਤ ਹਨਾ ਪਾਰ ਬਾਉਂਦਨ ਕਿੰਗ ਬਰੀ ਫਨਰ ਮਹਨਤ ਦਾ ਨਰ ਮੋਹਨਤ ਆ ਜੋ ਬਾਲਕ ਆ ਬਾ ਆ ਦੋ ਹਨ ਦਾ ਨਰ ਮੋਹਨ ਐਨ ਦਾ ਰਬ ਬਖੋ ਲੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਬਲਾ ਟਿੰਪਲ ਯਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਫਿਟ ਯਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਾਪਰ ਅਬਲੀ ਦੇਸ ਬਾ ਬਾਪ ਕਾਮਰ ਕੇ ਕਰ ਦੀ ਵੇ ਤ੍ਰੀ ਟ੍ਰਾਪ ਕਾਮਰ ਤੇ ਟੈਕ ਫੁਨ ਮੈ ਦਰ ਹੂ ਬਟ ਮੈ ਨਾ ਕੈਨਰ ਕੋ ਨੋ ਬਜੂਕੂ ਪੋਟ ਮੈ ਲੀਵ ਨੇਮ ਲਕੈਂਦਾ ਦੇ ਦਰ ਕੋਟ ਨੀ ਮਨ ਬੰ ਦ ਜੋਬਸ ਬਟ ਲੈਟ ਨੀ ਉਹ ਕਾਉਦੋਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਨਾਪ ਵੀ ਦਾ ਚੇਤੀ ਕੋਈ ਕੰਬਰੇ ਦਾ ਦੇਖ ਕੋਈ ਕੋਈ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਚਾਪਤੇ ਬਹੀਰ ਉਹ ਅਨਾਉਦੋ ਆਉਤੇ ਆਉਤੇ ਦਾ ਬਾਨਿਕ ਬੈਨ ਨਾ ਦੰਗਨ ਸਾਹੋ ਤੋ ਮੈਂ ਵਿਜਤ ਸਰ ਕਾਮ ਕੀ ਫਿਲਮ ਮੇ ਤੂੰ ਸਾਈ ਖਾਦਾ ਸਰ ਬਹੀਰ ਉਹ ਰਬਰੀ ਬੰਦੇ ਨਾ ਤੂੰ ਕੈਪ ਨਾ ਰੋਦੂ ਅਨਾ ਨਾ ਦਾ ਬੰਮਤ ਕਪੇ ਦਾ ਕੋਲ ਜੋਪਤਾ ਦਾ ਮੁਤਰੀ ਮੰਦੋ ਫੁਰਤ ਬੈਨ ਤੇ ਜੀ ਮੰਦੋ ਫੁਰਤ ਉਪਜਤ ਮੁਖਤ ਫਤਰਾ ਅੰਦਾਨਾ ਹੈ ਬੈਨ ਜੋਕ and born believe to one of those the man and the jet have kicked the put from or dot have rebelled in the morning on of the tandy on the red man all the earth you panit well near contando and now the wood they did need help up and then they can't do what they quit they can't come on to get that one he paid back money get better but we children now that's been more and that could be done here can we pray Good afternoon. Uh after this testimony, I will take over from Sam. I I hope you can all hear me well. Okay. Um my name is Tess and I also work at the uh, VAPH, the Flemish Agency for People with a Disability. And I will tell you something more about the main steps in uh, granting a personal budget in Flanders. When a person with a disability applies for a personal budget, they first have to get a needs assessment to decide what types of support are most suitable and necessary. It is important to determine how a person lives and wishes to live, what their strengths and weaknesses are and what support they already have and do not have, etc. During this process, 
the needs and wishes of the person with a disability take center stage. Then they have to submit a support plan at the Flemish agency, VAPH. This plan lists all their options and those of their network regarding the care and support of the person. It can be made by the person with a disability themselves or if they want, with the help of a support plan service or a social work service. The next step is to hand in a multidisciplinary report. This report is drawn up by a multidisciplinary team and describes objectively the disability, the support needs and the urgency of the question of the people who apply for a personal budget. To objectively determine the amount of support, help or permanence a person with a disability requires in their daily life, a support intensity instrument is being used. In the next step, a decision is made by the Flemish Disability Assessment Commission on the recognition of the person as a person with a disability. This commission also decides on the basis of a number of criteria, the urgency of the request by ranking the question of the person in a priority group. The priority group under which your request comes determines how long you will have to wait to receive your personal budget. In some cases, they will decide that the personal budget is made available immediately without waiting period because of certain circumstances, such as an unexpected death of the parents uh, or in the case of abuse, these are called uh, automatic allocation groups. Otherwise, uh, you need to wait uh, until you are on top of the waiting list uh, until there are enough um, financial resources. The combination of the needs assessment, the support intensity instrument and the support plan together determines the height of the personal budget that people are entitled to. If people want support, guidance or information about personal budgets, they can consult different organizations for this. These organizations are subsidized by the Flemish agency to guide the people with a disability. There are assistance organizations. These organizations help people with the startup and management of their personal budget. There also is the, the help desk of the Flemish agency itself. This is for general questions about the spending possibility of the budget and about administration. Then there are also disabled people's organizations who represent persons with a disability. They can give people information about the different possibilities of support by the VAPH or other regular services. And they also provide information about the administra administrative steps that need to be taken to get the support, such as, for example, the steps to apply for a personal budget. There are uh, different models regarding the control or administration of the personal budget. Unless it is determined otherwise, the person with a disability controls the budget themselves. They have free choice to spend the budget with cash or with voucher or a combination of both. Cash can be used with both a licensed or an unlicensed service provider. A refundable advance to get started is given to the person. The responsibility for the administration regarding the budget is for the persons with a disability themselves. The people have to register their agreement and invoices with the Flemish agency to get their money. They need to guard themselves how much money they have left to spend with their personal budget when they start up new some sorts of support. The other possibility is to use a voucher. Vouchers can only be used with licensed service providers. The service provider makes an agreement with the person with a disability about the amount of the personal budget that will be spent with them and gets the money according to this agreement directly from the Flemish agency. There is no administration left for the person with a disability. And in the agreement, 
it is taken up what kind and what frequency of support the person will be getting from the provider for what amount. When registering the voucher, there's an automatic check that there is enough money left in the personal budget for this agreement. So the support, um, the service provider knows this. In some cases, a protection status is assigned by the court to a person with a disability. The court has to decide for all categories of decision making if the person with a disability is capable or needs supported decision making. An administrator is assigned to the person and the budget is managed according to the court's decision. The control on the spending of the personal budget is for the most part done by administrative checks by the VAPH. These checks are random and the goal is to give timely feedback on the correct application of the spending rules to the persons with a disability. VAPH, so the Flemish agency, can always request to provide supporting documents such as agreements or invoices to prove the correct spending of the budgets. There's also always the possibility of an unexpected inspection at the place where the personal budget is used, for example, at the location of a service provider. These inspections are mostly randomly chosen or can be specifically requested by the by the Flemish agency in cases of signals that this is needed. The personal budget can be used for various forms of care and support, such as residential support, day support, individual psychosocial support, practical help, permanence, on-call permanence, and so on. This can be done for example, through an agreement with an interim office or with a volunteer organization. Also possible to have an agreement with a family member, a licensed service provider or an unlicensed service provider. Another possibility is an agreement with an assistance organization or maybe a small scale initiative such as a parental uh, initiative or a green care initiative and so on. Personal budgets cannot be used for assistive technology and adaptations. It is possible to get such material assistance in Flanders, but this is funded in a different way than with personal budgets. So it's not um, paid with the personal budget. There is a freely disposable part of the budget, which is assumed to only be used to meet care and support needs but there's no amenability to the VAPH of these expenses. So they don't have to prove these expenses to the VAPH. This is an amount of 1,800 per year for the lower budget categories and 3,600 euros uh, for the higher budget categories. It is used, for example, to pay for travel expenses of a personal assistant for traveling during the working hours or uh, for entrance tickets for the personal assistance guiding a person with a disability at an excursion. Also possible to use it for phone expenses, office expenses of personal budget holders and so on. The personal budgets are not considered as a taxable income, but expenses done with the personal budget are possibly subject to taxes and social security payments. To end this presentation, we will give you an idea of the amount of budget holders in Flanders. There were about uh, 25,300 adults with a personal budget in Flanders in 2019. This number has risen to 25,400 by half of 20, 000, uh, 2020, and their number keeps on rising. On top of that, there are a bit more than 1,000 minor personal assistance budget, budget holders, and this number is also rising. It keeps on rising. You can find more information about um, our system on our website. I, I think Sam, he can put the link to our website in the chat box on the site. Okay, thank you, Sam. Um, we hope this gave an idea about a first rough idea about our system and how it works. We hope it was interesting for you and we are open for your questions or remarks now. Thank you.
Thank you, Sam and Tess. That was really an impressive lot of information. And I might say, as an Austrian, I also understand this complex mix of national and regional responsibilities. We have kind of the same challenge. And thank you also for sharing this personal testimony. I think the reactions in the chat box showed us that is a very powerful way to understand what such a system change really means for the lives of persons needing support and, and how it increases their possibility to, to life, live life like they want to do. So yeah, we have had a lot of information. So now I can open the floor for questions. And um, I hope I can see when you want to ask questions, but uh, it's not so easy with many participants. So if you just turn on your, your your mic and, and, and talk, it might help me also because I can only see part of you. <laughs> Do we have any questions, reactions to what we heard so far? Uh, Tom would like to take the floor, uh, Karim. Please, <laughs> I really didn't see him. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I, I was quite curious uh, to know if um, Sam and Tess, if, 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 if they sort of, uh, when they put in place this practice, did they explore what was happening in, in different countries? Or was it done only within, let's say, the, the regional Flanders? Did you draw on experiences from other countries? And if so, what were the differences that you chose to do differently in Flanders? than in, in those countries. Uh, are you asking about the different countries or different regions in Belgium? Uh, uh, different countries. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I understood the question well. Maybe Sam, can you help me? Did you understand it well? well yeah, but when, when we made up the Perspectives 2020, of course we were inspired a bit by what happened in other countries and mainly in uh, the UK, in England, for, where they already had a personal budget system when uh, I think uh, and uh, other uh, yeah, Anglo-Saxon countries where they already were uh, experimenting with personal budget systems. But it's not like we uh, copied the system of another country um, when we uh, yeah, put the, our personal budgeting system in place, we started from our, our uh, situation and tried to um, make the transition into a personal budget system, which is, I think, quite unique with uh, the cash formula and the voucher formula. Um, so we, we didn't really um, explore what happened in, in other countries into detail, but we were in, inspired by uh, the, the movements that were happening in other countries, of course. I don't know if that's an answer to your question. Tom, are you happy with the question? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank yes. you. Okay, in the meantime, we got the question from Simon in the chat box, and he is asking, why did VAPH adopt personal budgets and what was the political pressure of forces that drove it? Can you give us an idea on that, Sam or Tess? I think that the main pressure behind it was the fact that um, also back in the days today, we still have waiting lists, but back in the day, um, we used to have a, um, not a centralized waiting list, but every service provider would have a service uh, would have a waiting list of its own so we know, knew um, there was a shortage in care and support or we knew there were some people who didn't get the care and support they needed but um, in the the first phase we, did, we didn't even know uh, knew how, about how many people um, for how many people this was going on. So the first step we took was to centralize the waiting lists. Then we had an ob objective. Um, we, we knew objectively how many people were still having uh, not enough care and support. And 
I think the, the main uh, factor uh, driving the transition was um, an effort to try to solve the waiting lists and to, um, as I uh, said in the pre presentation in Perspective 2020, one of the main goals was to assure that um, people with the highest need for care and support actually got the care and support they needed. Thank you. Do we have other questions or reactions? I'll just say in, in response to that, it's really interesting, isn't it, that the, the desire for rationality in rationing, even if the waiting list isn't disappearing, being more rational about the waiting list has been a helpful force. Um, and it would be interesting, maybe this is a kind of follow up because the waiting list still exists. What What is the... Uh, has there been any further development in the thinking about the waiting list? Because obviously the waiting list is itself a failure in respect of human rights, isn't it? Well, um, as, or just if, if you want to go, um, uh, I, I wanted to talk about the survey we, we were planning to do. Um, so as Tess explained, we have three categories of um, prior prior. Prior, uh, priority groups, I'm sorry. Um, and f uh, especially for the third group, the waiting time is really, really long. So we are now planning to do a survey among, amongst a, a group of the people who are on in the third uh, group to try to figure out what kind of uh, care and support they need. How are they managing today? Because they have a question for a personal budget and they are not getting a personal budget so how how are they coping and with the results of that um, questionnaire we will try to find a way to to um to to try to to give them the care and support they need but we still have have to um start the the questionnaire so we'll see uh, if that uh, hopefully we will get the results we want Yes, I don't know if you want to add something. Yes, maybe I want to add something uh, in regard to the, the waiting list. Um, obviously, if you have waiting list, there's a scarcity of resources. And as a government, you have to think about what you will do with your scarce resources. How will you divide it uh, over people? And um, I, 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 the Flemish agency was well aware that just switching your system into a personal budget system is not the answer to solve your waiting lists uh, that, that it's not because you organize it in a different way that you will have a, a fewer fewer people waiting it's quite the opposite because it's a, a more uh, inclusive way of working uh, it will speak to more people with disabilities to ask your questions so what we saw in the first year uh, and years and it's still going on is that there are um, very lot of people uh, who are um, asking uh, a question for support or asking for a personal budget so even to have um, the waiting list being as long as it was you have to make very much investments in it because the questions are coming faster than the resources are um, it's a little morbid to say, but then people with disabilities are dying and there are new resources for new questions. This is not in, a, in, in, a, in balance. So we see that even to have the same amount of people waiting, you have to do a good investments. And I think it proves that the system is more interesting also for people with a disability to apply for because it helps more people, it's, it speaks to more people. Uh, also on the side, you do have a growth of the of the population uh, aside from how interesting the system is. But this is really a complex way of thinking about how will you handle handle your resources, how will you prioritize? Um, in a perfect world, you, you would have enough resources to help every everybody with their complete question. But that's what Sam was what Sam said. We know we, we don't, and we know we we won't have it in a, a short amount of time to help everybody but we do want to think about what can we do for those people who are uh, at a, a spot on the waiting list which seems to be 
I know I'm searching for the right word in English, but it seems to be like oof, I will be waiting for years. I don't have to count on the budget. Um, we, we want to get out of a system of an all or nothing story that you have a budget or you don't have it. Maybe you can try to search for some possibilities for these people with a longer waiting period. What can we do for them? Maybe we cannot give them an entire personal budget, but maybe we can give them some sort of support to already get started so they don't have to be waiting for the, for, for the next years without any perspective on a personal budget. Um, and that's what we try to do now. So that's something in the design of a personal budget system that really needs to be taken into account if you have scarce resources, which we don't like, and, and, and everybody is trying to, to uh, advocate for more uh, investments where possible and so on. Um, but how, how will you prioritize? How, how will you get the resources to the people who need it the most? And then how will you not forget the other, for just entirely forget the other ones? Like, how can we make it more just? It will never be 100% just because if it's 100% just, just and you don't have any waiting period for anybody who, who needs it. Um, so this is something that we're constantly evaluating and, and, and struggling with and searching. But um, I'm not convinced that the, a personal budget can solve scarcity of resources, but it, it's not the opposite either. It's not like uh, it's uh, far more expensive and, 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 and it makes the, the waiting list grow because it's not efficient or something. No, I, I'm not convinced that's the case either. It just shows us that it's a better system and it's working. Thanks a lot, Tess and, and Sam, for this also like complex discussion, really uh, going into the challenges that can't be so easily solved. Uh, in the meantime, we have um, another question from Tom, who was asking what was the response of the service providers, like in terms of challenges they experience with this system change. Can you give us an idea about that? Well, it varied immensely. Some of the service providers were very pro the system change and were really prepared uh, for a transition. Others were uh, reluctant to, to say the least, um, to, to answer anecdotal, anecdotally. Um, on the day before the transition took place, we received a phone call from one service provider saying he wasn't going to join the new system. So, um, and what were the, the main challenges? Well, the the main uh, the, the main concern for the um, service providers was um, that the change would uh, happen too quickly, so they, they wouldn't have the time to prepare to put in place a new um, thinking about the management about uh, yeah in a personal budget system they have to think about financing and stuff like that more than when it's a, a supply driven finance system so the way we um, put a transition in place was to make sure that even though everything changed changed from a, a supply driven system to a demand driven system actually the first day nothing changed because everybody got their budget every every everyone who was an ex existing user um, on the day of the transition, transition, just got a budget. Budget, and if you um, combined all the budgets, put put them all together, the service provider on the next day would still have the same amount of money he would get when he uh, still had the subsidies. The main difference is people now have their budget, and they, if they want to change their the way their their care and support is organized, they are able to. Thanks a lot, Sam. Um, we are coming to the end of our question answer session. Maybe you could give us a short uh, answer to a last question that was posed by Teresa. And she says, um, are 3,600 euro max enough to all needs of persons with disabilities? Or is this kind of like a, a complement to a pension? Maybe a short answer to that? 
Yes, uh, the, the freely disposable budget, which uh, Teresa is referring to, is a part of the budget. So, if you get, for example, a, a high amount, a high amount of fifty thousand euros a year, then uh, you have three thousand six hundred of the fifty thousand. You don't have to prove. You can use for for. It's it's not to to buy just whatever you want. It's it's for care and support. But you don't have to prove it to the VAPH, and the rest of it, the fifty thousand minus the 3,600 euros needs to be proven with invoices and agreements to the, to the agency. So that's what we, we meant with the freely disposable budgets to lower some of the, for the small amounts to lower the administrative burden for uh, people with a disability. Thanks a lot, Tess. And I think I may share with the participants that both you and Sam had agreed with Constantina and Miguel that you might be open to answer additional questions by mail if, if people uh, have specific questions that we could not address now in this limited time. So I would like to thank again our speakers for really sharing uh, their expertise and experience uh, to all you participants for for being here, for contributing, and for this interesting discussion. And also to our supporters in the background, like helping us with captioning and um, technical support. And I will close this session with, with some observations and concluding remarks. Maybe not only what was said today, but also like from my perspective in the UNIC project and, and from the more intense discussions I, I could have with my colleagues from Flanders. And so I would like to say that, that for me, it's, it's confirmed that developing the right funding model is one of the most crucial steps in ensuring that service providers are in line with the UNCRPD and that persons with disabilities have choice and control over their lives. And I think the personal testimony that we could uh, see today uh, really underlined that. And I know also that VAPH um, said that they really perceived the major change in, in the Flemish care and, and support landscape. And with all diversity also in the way of service providers are organizing care and support. And that this change was largely um, brought about by moving from a more supply driven funding system to a personalized funding system. So I think this really underlines the, the importance. What was also, I think, quite obvious, and we did not have enough time to ask all these questions, was that it is a complex process to, to conduct such a reform and that it really has to be thoroughly planned, uh, guided, monitored, that you need a long-term strategy and that you have to have a commitment to really evaluate, improve all the time to, to meet the changes or the challenges that arise during implementation. And I think Tess and Sam gave us several examples of the studies and evaluations they are doing to better address uh, the, the, the challenges they identified. Another point that uh, is very clear is that service users uh, have to take center stage in the reform process and also in the service provision. And I know that our colleagues from VRPH also uh, realized certain differences. They, they said that um, it's faster for new service users to, to make a change towards our more self-management and autonomy. And that for people who had used the old system for a longer time, it takes more time and, and, and maybe also more addressing more measures to that. So I think that's also important to keep in mind. Um, we didn't have a lot of time, but I know that the Flemish system is quite open in terms of target groups. So I think it's important to note that for a good personal budget system, it's also important that it's available for all target groups, also with the appropriate support if needed that it should be independent of income and give people the opportunity to use it in a flexible and unbureaucratic way to really uh, follow their needs and wishes and preferences. And finally, I think that was something we did discuss to a certain extent and is very complicated. Um, 
Sufficient financial resources are also a crucial topic with personal budgets. It's not a way of uh, economizing funds, at least not if you want to fund uh, quality support. So um, our colleagues said it was a challenge in the old system and it continues to be a challenge in the new system to have sufficient funding but that personal budgets are a better way to use the funds in a more efficient and more effective way uh, to increase quality of life for persons with disabilities. So I think these are the five main issues I take away from today from a very complex topic that hopefully we have a lot of opportunity to discuss at other moments. And I know that Miguel prepared a final slide for us. Yep, here it is. So I would like to draw your attention to the upcoming ESPD conference on person-centered technology that will be held in Brussels in this October. And it will also be our 25th anniversary in ESPD. And I can tell you that ESPD makes all efforts to, to, to have an interesting and safe in-person event. And we would be really delighted if you joined us. So thanks again for your participation and hopefully we see you soon in Brussels. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye everybody. All right, thank you. Well done, Karen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, uh, colleagues from the VR. Yes, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Would you like to stay one second? Yeah, no problem. No. I'm sorry, I'm just removing people. <laughs> Great. All good? Are you are you happy with uh, the event? I think there were some interesting questions, so that means they have been listening to the story and they are following what we're saying. The first ones were difficult for me about the historical part. So I was happy Sam was there to join me. <laughs> I, I, I always have a lot to say about the new system, but I wasn't there for the old system. So uh, it's, it's nice to have some experience behind me then. <laughs> uh, but I hope it was clear and it was not too fast. And No, I think it was very, from my uh, perception, it was very clear and informative. And I think it also gave uh, the realistic impression that there is so much more behind, of course. Uh, but I think you got across really a, a, a lot of important messages. And the video was excellent. Like a lot of people like it, uh, here in the office probably and the people was reacting. So it was a really good addition. Yes, I, I, I'm very glad that we added the video. I think it's similar to what Petra wants to include in the UNIC project in the Ford work package. It, it, it immediately, made, immediately made me think about this video. So it was definitely good that we, uh, because we had to add some 